last year, I came to the conclusion that my synthesizer, which was mostly made of strip board and stuff, yeah, it was it was breaking way too much. Something's broken! And I came to the conclusion that I needed to do something about it. And at the end of last year, I started turning some of the most unreliable suspects into printed circuit board projects to uh, make them more reliable. Fast forward to January, I said to myself I was going to put out one module a month. And yeah, I'm on my seventh, so I'm sort of keeping to schedule. So what is May's offering? Well, it's this. The triple splashback. This one was quite an urgent one for me because the module it was replacing was held together with insulation tape and yeah, needless to say, it stopped working a long, long time ago. It's based around three PT2399 echo chips and it's basically an echo effect with lots of endearing crappy characteristics. So the PT2399 chip is an echo chip that came out sometime in the 90s and it was basically a drop-in kind of solution to give products uh, an echo, be it a karaoke device, a car stereo system, musical effects processor, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading from the rather vague data sheet. And the PT2399 was one of a number of these chips that basically reduced a rather large amount of components down to a number of components around a single chip to make a useful effect. And this meant it became very, very popular in the guitar effects world. And here's some guitar effects pedals that I found after a quick search that have the PT2399 chip in them. And yeah, that's quite a lot. Needless to say, it also bled into synthesizer design and it's very popular there as well. So I've built a fair few projects with the PT2399 chip. It all began actually probably my third ever electronics project and it was a Velleman Echo Kit which was basically a circuit board with a PT2399 chip and a few other components on it. Needless to say, I messed around with it and modified it to the point that it was making some very strange sounds indeed. Basically, the PT2399 chip's echo time, it's relatively short and the longest delay time you can get is about half a second. But you can push it further, but the problem is when you push it further, the sound gets a lot more grainy and strange and you can push it even further until it gets to this random, strange, confused mode where it seems to jump in and out of dimensions making some truly weird sounds. <laughs> Yeah, what I did with the triple splashback is basically tripled this sketchiness and made it into, yeah, a single module. This isn't the only machine that uses more than one PT2399 chip. For instance, a lot of cheap reverb effects pedals actually use three PT2399s in them with offset echoes to sort of give the feeling that you're in a spring reverb kind of chamber. This delay basically breaks out all of the controls. It has one shared delay time that also has two offsets. So you can control all of the delay times at the same time, but you can offset. So how I did this is I started with the datasheet schematic on a breadboard times it by Free and kind of mess around with the breadboard for a week or two, messing around, trying a few different things. And there's a video of the breadboard design over on my other channel, Look Mum No Computer, but more serious-ish. The link is in the description. And after I found I had the ratio just right between good sounding and rather bad sounding, a little bit more slanted to the rather bad sounding, I decided to turn it into a fully fledged module so I could put it into my modular synthesizer. Anyway, without further ado, let's build this thing. Oh, so what have we got here? Right, we've got the panel of PCB set, lovely jabbly, there's lots of pictures in there. And this is everything that is required, including the resistors, the capacitors, the IC chips, the knobs, and all that stuff. Start with the resistors and start soldering them in. Just look for the numbers on the uh, on the PCB board and you'll be fine. And then you just get soldering down, and then you solder them all, and then you get your snippy snippy and you're gonna snip off the legs. And then after that you admire them and then you get onto the capacitors. These are just as simple, they've got labels on the PCB, so what you just do is you put the right things in the right places and this bus back! we're good. And then we go to the electrolytic capacitors. These are the ones that have to be the right way round. The white side goes to the white bit on the PCB board. And then you put in the transistors, the IC sockets and the pin headers and all that stuff and you're good to go. Just make sure everything's the right way round and then you turn it around and you pop in the potentiometers, the LEDs and the switches. Make sure you don't solder them until you put the panel on to make sure it's all perfectly lined up because you might cause damage and stuff. And then solder them all down and then you should be good to go with that and so it's a okay just make sure all the solder is nice and strong and proper and then you do the daughterboard which is the jack socket and you put it down 
down like that and you tighten it up, do it the same and then you solder it afterwards when it's all in place. And then after that you've got to put on the knobs. These knobs can be any knobs you want, but the knobs that I use, there's links in the description and then you admire your workmanship. Hopefully it works. Fingers crossed now. Oh, look at the back. Just make sure all the solder is done nice and well and just reflow it if it doesn't work. And then you pop it in. I somehow lost the sound to this bit, but I don't know how that happened. Anyway, let's go. So let's see what this is about. I've got two plugged in, but I'll just stick with one first and then see where we go. So I'll bring in a synthesizer line that's going straight into it. Right, let's bring in the first delay. switch which kind of bypasses some of the filtering on the PT2399s. Which makes it a bit brighter. Let's put an LFO into the control voltage input. garbage mode it turns into a really noisy machine. So this is now controlled by the trigger of the snare, which is making this change time every time the snare gets hit. Like, if you listen. Now I'm gonna press play. Now this is being modulated by the snare.
there we go, that's the triple splashback echo. It's not a high fidelity delay and it's not going to do extremely long delay times, but it's going to texture the sound and that's what I'm using it for in my touring setup to kind of bring in and bring out like an effects pedal with the bypass switch. I've got three of them in the synthesizer rack, I'm going to put one in the drum rack. Four delays of three, so that's 12 delays in total. Some people will say that's overkill. I'm just saying I'm well prepared, right? Like I said, with all of these Cosmo PCB panel modules, you can actually get these on my website, so check that out. The link is in the description. There is also the schematic, as well as a simplified stripboard version of the delay, so if you want to build it on stripboard, you still can. If you're looking to build these sort of modules, which are basically big Eurorack, because it's got the same power supply, you can interchange with Eurorack and these modules perfectly fine. There is a really interactive forum of users and builders over on my site, so if you want to go and check that out, the link is in the description as well. People on the forum have also been sharing their projects like this amazing conversion, I can't wait to build that and also some mutable instrument braids conversion panels. These basically mean that you can get the braids and convert them into this. These literally turned up today. These are by a fellow on the forum called Josh and there's a link to these in the description as well and I'm looking forward to replacing my old tired out braids panel because uh, yeah these are pretty damn neat. He also sent a blank as well, how cool is that? And also later today is the monthly Patreon live stream. I'm going to be using these, the modified CR78 and the subharmonicon and everything else in the live stream because yeah I haven't I haven't used these in a the live stream yet so I'm gonna give them a go so if you're interested in joining the discussion and listening to some synthesizer jams then come and check it out because needless to say it supports some rather large projects that are coming up including the pretty silly thousand oscillator megadrome which I'm soldering right now and it's it's pretty damn boring anyway until the next video I've been Luke Mundo Computer don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it bye